Just for fun guys, we're gonna do TTCF here as this was one that blew up my channel. Welcome back in YouTube. First and foremost, I wanna thank those who have served, gave the ultimate sacrifice for their country. Thank you so much. And hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Welcome back in YouTube. So in this video, I just want to go over the history of price targets that we've been working on on the channel. Now, most of these have been done 12, 16 months ago, and I haven't really updated them as, you know, I've really been focused more on the macro backdrop, but just kind of wanted to go over, you know, how accurate YouTubers are and, you know, why you shouldn't probably listen to YouTubers. And the other thing is, is that when we run projections, it's really subjective to what we believe can happen internally with the company. We're really banking on management executing, we're banking on the macro backdrop supporting the business. And so there's a lot of different ways for these to play out. And that's why you get contrasting opinions, especially with these companies that are not quite that are not quite profitable. So I just want to go through the history of kind of what we've done over the last 18 months. It's been a lot of hard work, and I figured that sharing it with everybody might enjoy this. <clears throat> so there's a lot of companies and I'm just going to breeze through them. You know, first let's start out with Airbnb. This was a hot IPO. I think this is one that, you know, I would kind of reach on because I just think that uh, when I look at their business model, where the hotel businesses are going, I think it does have a competitive advantage. And a lot of people are building business models around Airbnb that I think can be sustainable and actually replace the rental market as well. So not only do I think they can compete with the hotel market and have a competitive advantage there, but I also think it will compete with bigger REITs in the rental market as well. The margins should expand in a company with Airbnb because the company really doesn't have a tremendous amount of overhead once the platform is built out. So we got a price target on Airbnb around $76, roughly $75 to $76. Now remember, a lot of these I've done were during IPOs when the stock was pretty expensive. So, you know, we have a high of 144 and a low of 81.91, kind of sitting in the middle here at 106. So, you know, definitely an opportunity for it to hit $75 on a market pullback. And when they when they post quarterly reports, I definitely need to update a lot of these. So these are definitely outdated. So as we can see here, Airbnb could definitely hit into the $75 range as $81 is a low and that's pretty much in the ballpark. We're never gonna be completely correct on this, right? So if it starts getting into the low 80s, well, I have the mid 75, I have the mid 70s there. So it might be a good time to start averaging in. And if it starts taking off on you, sit back and see if it gets back down into the 70s. Obviously this is not financial advice, but just some food for thought. Next up is going to be Neo, and I basically got a six to seven dollar price target on this. You can see here from a free cash flow standpoint, future free cash flow standpoint, I get a four dollar price target, and from a EV to EBITDA, I get basically an eight to nine dollar price target. The high on the stock over the last year has been twenty four forty three, and the low is at seven dollars and thirty three cents. So basically, right in the wheelhouse of where we've been price targeting for Neo. And mind you, actually, I think I did this price target when it was much higher, much higher than. $24. I remember it being in the 30s when I did this and I got a lot of got a lot of hate for this one, but um, you know, I would say that this one is pretty much in line with my, what my expectations were. And at this point in time, I think the stock becomes pretty interesting. You have a lot of risk on the table considering that it is a Chinese company and you just don't know what to expect from China and the relationship going forward with China and US and also, you know, the accounting principles that China goes by. Next up, I have Intel. Um, you know, this is one that I'm really not interested in unless it gets extremely cheap. I think that there is a defensiveness to Intel, the fact that it's a domestic company um, and what's going on with China and Taiwan. So this one, be, this one is interesting at the right price. Um, I do think there's a lot of risk. I think they're they're burning a lot of capital. I think they're losing market share. There's multiple headwinds here. I do think that the stock's going to get punished, and it's and it's definitely getting punished. And we got a price target basically at twenty one to twenty two dollars a share. I think I ran these. I think I ran Intel's analysis in the mid thirties or low thirties, and it did hit a fifty two week low of twenty four fifty nine. So. You know, basically in the ballpark, once again, um, could it get lower? I do think it could get lower. I think we're seeing, because NVIDIA just blew the doors off and because they're really, their forward guidance is just absolutely ridiculous. I think because their forward guidance is absolutely ridiculous, it's sending a lot of the chip makers much higher and it's putting a bid under a lot of these chip makers. And in my opinion, Intel and Micron um, are benefiting from that as well. The initial knee-jerk reaction was a sell-off actually when 
with Intel, but as we can see here, a, a five, almost a 6% pop intraday uh, on no news really, um, sent, the, sent the stock back to a premium in my opinion. But I think once it gets below that $24 mark or right in that $24, $25 mark, it definitely becomes interesting at those levels. Warner Brothers Discovery. Now this one was one I was interested in. I definitely missed the $8 here. Um, we have an eight to $9 price target on WBD. And check this out, hit a low of 882 and a high of 1874 over the last year, trading right in the middle at $11.45. I'm definitely starting to reformulate my opinion on the streaming aspect of things here. You know, it's just seeming like it's going to be a low margin business. Um, I probably would prefer buying something like Disney with multiple streams of income. And Disney is in a transition standpoint and we got a price target on disney as well so let's look over at disney but i kind of want to talk through why i think i prefer a company like disney um over a lot of the other streamers is the fact that disney has multiple businesses and an ability to create revenue uh, depending on what's going on with the consumer they're not just relying on one thing here they have cruises they have parks they have streaming just not banking on one thing here you have a diversified business model and they're in a transition standpoint where i do think disney stock will get cheaper um, and we went over disney stock so i'll leave that video above but you take a look at an you take a look at a netflix that's trading for a 168 billion dollar market cap and a company like disney that's trading for 161 billion dollar market cap and I think getting Disney at a discount here makes it more interesting than owning the any of the streamers. So I would say, you know, getting Disney in the 70s would be ideal. A lot of people don't think it can get to those levels, but I want people to remember I was writing Disney, um, I was writing Disney in the 70s at 110. We do have a $75 price target on Disney here. And I think that's where Disney gets really, really interesting. Um, I don't think they're gonna go anywhere. I think the consumer is going to be hurt. Uh, over the next year or two and I think we could see the park suffer which is their strongest business a um, couple conflicting things with Disney's report linear they're hemorrhaging money on linear they're getting more efficient on streaming but the streaming aspect they lost subscribers and so very conflicting report but this is a transition standpoint here we have new management in there and they are kind of redirecting this massive massive moat so that takes time it takes patience there's going to be some pain ahead, I think, but I think you can get it in the 70s, and I think that would be a tremendous opportunity if they keep if they keep focused on the streaming aspect and they keep building out the other businesses much stronger. So um, definitely something I would rather, I think that would be an either or, I would rather wait on Disney at 75 than really purchase any of the streaming companies. Now, that's just my opinion, um, but let me know what you think down below. Another popular one on the channel has definitely been SoFi, and this one, you know, I've just kept steady at four you know basically 450 to 515 is is kind of where i find sofi interesting um you know what's going with with what's going on with the macro backdrop and now that sofi is taking on these loans i actually think it's a little bit more of a risky investment on uh possible defaults in the future and i know you know everybody's going to tell me that that they have the best clientele in the world and that could be true but let's think about where these layoffs are coming from these layoffs are coming from kind of the better clientele pro you know programmers people that work in the it department so that seems to fit their clientele and that to me is a little bit concerning and i don't think sofi is going to go anywhere but you know who really knows um, so I do think this is a high risk. I think I do think this could be a high risk um, investment, uh, especially the fact that they're not free cash flowing, but they are heading in the right direction. The balance sheet seems fine. Um, they can withstand a pretty pretty substantial downturn here. Um, so that's what I get for SoFi. Once again, SoFi was uh, I think between a ten and eleven dollar stock, maybe even closer to thirteen when I ran this analysis. And when we look at the fifty two week levels on SoFi hit 424 and 852 so it definitely hit into the wheelhouse actually got below it um and that's where i think it gets interesting is between that 450 and five dollar mark just for fun guys we're gonna do ttcf here as this was one that blew up my channel as i did taste a lot of ttcf food and that's how i got a lot of my subscribers 
Um, when I started digging into the quarterly reports and uh, realizing that they weren't hitting numbers, the margins were shrinking, everything that they said they were going to do, they're not doing. I definitely got out of the stock and I started running analysis a little bit more realistically here. And we started getting price targets of about a dollar to 40 cents. And it's in the wheelhouse. But uh, when you're talking about stocks that are trading at 50 cents, I would definitely be concerned here, would not be uh, stepping in anytime soon. So um, yeah, that was one that I tried to warn a lot of people. Uh, viewership definitely dipped, um, but I think I did the right thing. So you know, a couple stocks I definitely got a, a couple stocks I got a lot of viewers view, viewership on, and um, it was Tattooed Chef, SoFi, Neo, uh, Tesla. So anytime I dive into those stocks, I definitely get a lot of views. Um, but what I realize is people are very biased in their opinions on a lot of those stocks, very cult-like, um, and they're not open to possibly being wrong. So, um, you know, you're not going to appease everybody. I just want to be as accurate and open and honest as I possibly can. And you're not going to be perfect, guys. As I stated, business execute di businesses execute differently. Uh, there's things that we don't see that happen in the macro backdrop that support businesses that we never saw coming. As most of you know, I do like a company like Pfizer here. Uh, you know, I think the, I think the valuation is appropriate and I think they have a tremendous amount of opportunity that's not being priced in the stock because COVID's gone and their revenues are declining about 25-30%. That's forced the stock to really sell off. Um, so now the question becomes why would I invest in a company that is having declining revenues and is selling off basically from 50 plus dollars down to low, you know, a hit as low as mid 30s. And the reason is that I think Pfizer is still advancing in medicines that we don't see coming and that we're probably going to need and they have a pretty strong business model regardless of covid so the macro backdrop supported pfizer getting up to 52 dollars or 53 dollars actually almost 55 dollars and now i say that this is still a good company regardless of covid's here or not because you know one of these biotech companies is going to come up with cures that we never saw coming and they're working on this stuff every day and we just don't know. And even if you take that out of the equation, I think Pfizer's interesting around $35, $36. And if it gets below that, I'm extremely, extremely interested. I'm talking about low 20s, uh, mid to high 20s. I would probably be loading the boat on a company like Pfizer. I just don't think they're going anywhere. And I think we need them more than we think we do. Now, this one's a little embarrassing here because you know I had a price target on NVIDIA at $76. And uh, boy, oh boy, did I miss the boat on this one. As the stock is now pushing near, nearly $400 and is starting to enter the trillion dollar valuation conversation. Here is the thing. It did hit 108. And you could make an argument if you have high conviction and it's something that you really, really want to own that you could reach at $100 when I had a price target of 75. Now, would I reach big on it? Probably not, but you're never going to nail the absolute bottom and the absolute top in stocks. The key is, is to build positions where you feel comfortable. And if you felt comfortable reaching at a 20, 25% premium, because the company has a, because the company has an immense total addressable market and that you actually believe that the growth rates could be much stronger than the street is anticipating, then maybe you would have saw this coming. Um, unfortunately, I do so many stocks that it's hard to dig really deep into individual ones. Um, but what I do is I scratch the surface level on individual stocks as much as I possibly can. And if something looks like it's tremendous value and not a lot of risk, that's when I start really digging deeper into that position. And so with NVIDIA, definitely missed this one. A $70 to $80 price target is about what I was looking for for Tesla. Got a lot, a lot of hate on that um, on that price target. But how close was I? The stock did go as low as 101. And if I was that bullish on Tesla, I definitely think with an $80, roughly an $80 price target, I probably would have reached at 101 here. Um, not seeing it with a company, didn't see it with a company like NVIDIA, could see it with a company like Tesla. Uh, just because there's so many aspects of their business that could actually um, pay dividends down the future. Um, so evaluation still seems pretty pretty ridiculous here. But if that valuation got cut in half, once again, we get closer to you know $300 billion valuation, which is still, still rich in my opinion. Um, I can understand taking the risk there. So we were pretty close on nailing the bottom on this one. Once again, guys, this is, this is not a... Uh, 
this is not a perfect science. It's never going to be a perfect science. If there's stocks that you're interested in, you've got to try to get as close as possible to what you think fair market value is. And then on top of that, at what point do you sell the stock if it has a massive move? And I think when we look at a company like NVIDIA, you rerun the numbers and then you reach out to where you think seven, 10 year price target could be. And if you start reaching those seven and 10 year price targets within one to two years, you really, you really have to be careful there. It might be an opportunity to take some profits if you're kind of outpacing what your expectations were by nearly seven to 10 years. I have a lot more that I've done, but I don't want to bore you. Kind of just wanted to review what the year looked like for us running these projections out. And hopefully this stuff is helpful to everybody. As always, appreciate your time. Leave a comment down below on stocks that you might want me to dip dive into and I'll do my best. You know, it's not perfect. It's not financial advice. Never listen to YouTubers and uh, we will see you in the next one. Peace.